I've been perplexed by the notion of gender for a while now. Every day many of us take for granted our gender expressions because we pass for what society deems as normal, acceptable, or expected. But why do we express ourselves in this way in the first place? What if we truly looked inward and questioned our own gender identity? What might that lead to? The breakdown of society? Eh. How about a more whole self and compassionate world? Through blending self-reflective practices with the sociological and theatrical perspectives of gender performance, we can become more aware of how we present ourselves every day. When we come to realize that people are more than their gender performances, we can become more empathetic towards those whose gender expression is different than ours. But what is gender really? To start, the ideas around gender are based loosely in sex, which is defined by biological features such as chromosomes, primary and secondary sex characteristics, and gamete size. Now, this is problematic for a whole host of reasons, especially since researchers and clinicians such as Eric Villain, the director for the Center of Gender-Based Biology at UCLA, have come to recognize that sex itself may exist on a spectrum. It's not as straightforward as male and female. Now, it's very interesting, too, that sometimes gender expression can change based on the situation. For example, a blossoming female executive may find herself dressing more masculine and acting assertive in order to gain credibility in the workplace. But on the weekends, when she's at the club with her girlfriends, she may dress more, more feminine and act flirtatious in order to be alluring to the guys across the bar. Speaking of clubs and bars, one of the greatest subversions of gender and one of the most dramatic examples of gender expression is found in drag culture. The definition of drag, according to sociologist Eve Shapiro, is also the performance of a gender. But in this case, drag is to dress up as a character who often has a different or more pronounced gender than that of the performer. There are many ways to perform drag, but the most common way is to be a drag queen. You've probably heard of drag queens before, such as RuPaul and Shangela. They've become quite well known throughout pop culture. Drag queens, or femme drag, consist of anyone who consciously makes a performance out of femininity. But most often these are people assigned male at birth who put on costumes and makeup and perform an exaggerated feminine character. Drag queens lip sync to songs, dance for tips, perform comedy acts, and do other variety acts in settings such as pageants or bars in order to win prizes or entertain the audience. The, the nature of drag being so performative exposes the fluidity of gender and gender expression and perhaps the fluidity of gender itself. So we must ask ourselves, are there truths about gender? Gender is such an intrinsic part of our being and so entrenched in our society that it's difficult to determine whether or not gender identity could exist outside of socialization. But regardless of whether gender identity is inherent or due to socialization, it is real, and gender is real in its consequences. Now, on, now, we must also recognize that gender socialization pushes us apart from each other, and perhaps from ourselves. On a macro level, this leads to increased prejudice and systematic inequalities, which result in a decreased quality of life for those involved. So, how can we take charge of our own gender identity and expression while still promoting peaceful differences? Well, we can employ mindfulness. Oh, excuse me, it's really hot in here. According to Buddhist tradition and spiritual leaders such as Thich Nhat Hanh, mindfulness is remembering to come back to the present moment. This can be achieved through breathing exercises, mantras, guided meditation, and basic self-reflection. Right mindfulness accepts everything without judging or reacting. 
It is inclusive and loving. This meditative practice has been known to help reduce stress and connect people with their wholeness. So in order to utilize mindfulness, in order to better understand our own perceptions of gender, we can follow the seven miracles of mindfulness. Through these miracles, we are encouraged to just be, being assured that if we become comfortable with our uncomfortable feelings, we can gain a new love and acceptance for ourselves and others. So sit back, close your eyes if you'd like, breathe, and think through the following with me. Number one, be present and touch deeply. Use grounding techniques to be in the moment. What words do you use to identify your gender? Number two, make the other present. Who in your life is different than you in gender? How might you actually be similar? Number three, nourish the object of your attention. How are you expressing gender today, in this moment? Respond to any confusion or frustration with gentleness, love, and respect. Number four, relieve the other's suffering. Imagine you encounter a different gender identity. How do you respond? Even if you don't understand their perspective, imagine responding in a respectful way. Remember that their gender is just as valid as yours. Number five, looking deeply. Have you ever questioned your own gender identity? How might your life be different if you identified as something else? Number six, understanding. What might you still need to learn about gender? Number seven, transformation. Now, mindfulness can help break down prejudice and reattach ourselves with our true gender identity, if we have one. If we open ourselves up to the idea that gender performance is fluid and that no one gender has a monopoly on certain traits, we can feel free to express ourselves. Open your eyes. In conclusion, mindfulness can help determine a healthy gender created by ourselves for ourselves. We must reconnect with ourselves and be honest in order to better represent and express our most authentic nature, which is not limited to gender. Once you give yourself that option, it may be overwhelming at first to think about who you are or what you could be. If you're stuck, you can utilize the philosopher Michel Foucault's practice of determining what you are not first in order to define who you are. You don't have to be a drag queen or a drag king like myself in order to explore and investigate gender. As long as you remember to utilize mindfulness techniques, you should be able to explore gender while keeping your insecurities in check. Mindfulness can help us be more aware of gender performance, and through that, we can learn to value differences in gender identity and expression and help us live in harmony. Thank you.